So welcome to a like a special podcast. The idea for this was Liverpool doing quite well in Europe, European Cup final, and I thought it'd be a good way to get a few Reds together and talk about our memories and experiences from uh, from following the Reds over the years. So we've got Tom. Hello, hello. We've got Paul. Hello. Peter. Hello. And Jockey. Good afternoon. So before we get going and talk about your many adventures, mostly I'm just going to be holding chair for this, to be honest, listening to your stories. One thing I wanted to start on though, after that Barcelona game last week, 4-0 at Anfield, I remember walking into the cop bar after it and there was a fella and I think like everyone in tears, well I certainly was, and he said, that's your Saint Etienne. He said, that is, you know, what a game. And I think this season it's kind of given me that feeling, watching them every week, that finally now, I'm 30 years of age and finally I'm in a position where I can kind of go to my dad and fellas who've been there seeing it like you lads have and go actually this team might be the best team Liverpool have ever had is that ridiculous for me to say or no uh, back to back European Cup finals even though we haven't actually won anything yet um, it's, I, I look at the kids now we were like 16 and they're like where they had all the, all the stories of their half fellas well they're living it now aren't they and hopefully you know it's, 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 it's now their time ok we lost last year surely we can't lose this year but also losing the point, losing the league by a point at 97 points. It's um, we're up there. It's, we're not a flash in the pan, are we? So before this season, then what would what team would you say was the best that you've seen? What year? It's it's them ones in the 80s, isn't it? It's um, people go on about the 88 team. I didn't see that. Uh, I was I was elsewhere at the time. But, uh, <laughs> um, people go on about them teams from 84 and that, you know 77, 78 back to back European Cup finals. Um, so yeah, the 80s, but this club's doing something, isn't it? it you know, and, and the only thing that's stopping us is um, the oil the oil billions, isn't it? Really? For me, it was, I was at the San Etienne game, you know, and I always remember, distinctly remember, I was sitting on a bar, two thirds the way up the cop, you know, and it was an unbelievable atmosphere. But I always remember the Kemlin Road, that's why I still call it the Kemlin Road, uh, low centenary now, or as Kenny Dagley stand, but... They, clap, they were clapping along, we, so we should not be moved or something. But the other week against Barcelona, I was in my dad's seat. Shouldn't say that, should I? But <laughs> it's the uh, sanctions committee are listening. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the whole of the lower Cameron, you know, the lower centenary, stood up for the whole game and sang. Yeah. You know, and that's how far it's. It's different nowadays. It's mm. different. You know, the cop was bouncing. The Annie Rowe was bouncing because the San Etienne fans in there with mad green wigs and all that. But for me, the Barcelona game, um, the comeback, it's the best ever because it's it's not just San Etienne were a good team, but for me, Barcelona was a better <clears throat> team, and it was Messi's Barcelona, mm. and everything they everything they've been building up for. You've got to remember that Real Madrid, you know, uh, arch enemies, political enemies as well. They'd all been building up to, we're going to win the Champions League in Madrid. That's what it was all about. So everything being prepared. They'd even rested most of the squad uh, the previous Saturday. Yeah, all 11 you, players got rested. <laughs> yeah, and and you see, um, you see when, Met, when um, they nearly got the fourth at the new Camp and Messi goes mad. He's, he's punching the ground because they've missed the fourth because mm. that he, he thought he knew what was coming and he said to him is it Balagay Gillian Balagay mm, yeah, yeah he said to him he, he, he tweeted about it um, after they were defeated at Anfield and he said Messi warned the rest of the players about this so we cannot play Liverpool like we did at home mm. because they came off exhausted they'd never run that much in their lives they came off exhausted they knew they got away with it. Mm. So it could have been easily 3-2, three, 3-0, three, oh, couldn't it? Yeah. Totally outplayed on their own ground. He said, we cannot play like that at Anfield. And that's why, you, I mean, I know they always play to the goalie. They always sang, play across the back. But they were, they were trying to slow the game down from the first few minutes. And they just couldn't do it. It was like, it was like a machine gun. <laughs> I'll be honest, machine gun. That, uh, that, that, that game... I met the lads in Castle Street at five o'clock and I'll be honest, <clears throat> turned up, I was thinking, despite it being a European Cup semi-final and we were playing for the league <clears throat> at the weekend, I'll be honest, I turned up and I was like, didn't think it'd feel a bit like, like this. I was a bit deflated already, but then as soon as you got in that ground, you knew something special was going to happen, didn't you? Well, I phoned you beforehand 
Mm. And you said you were in Castle Street, and I was thinking, what time are we going to get here? And he ended up getting the Glen Book about half six, because we had someone, a, a family member, who, who knew someone from Costa Rica was down, and he ended up getting the ticket, and we were going to make sure he sat next to us, well, stood next, stand next to us, sorry. So then I'd met one of the other lads, uh, Gary Bandit, and we were walking down because he was going to get his ticket, and it must have been about quarter past seven, and as I'm walking past the cop, I thought... What the fuck am I doing? Walking past, I'm going in. I was like, I was attracted to going because in the boozer it was muted. Yeah. But as you got towards the ground, you could just feel it. It was like, it's wow, yeah. there's something going on here. Mm. I'm getting in. And as we got in, there was a group of us that always congregated at the bottom and have a few little drinks every now and again. And they passed me a drink and I remember it. They went, listen to San Miguel. And I've had one sip of the San Miguel and went, I can't have that. I've got to go up there. And I had to yeah. go and be part of it. Yeah. And even at half time, I was like, no, fuck that. I'm not staying here. I'm, I'm getting back up there. Yeah. And they yeah. were all like, where's he going? And because I don't know why I felt it. I don't know about you or, yeah. or you or. Not oh, me. Yeah. Not well, me, no, but... I mean, I done an um, interview with Catalonian TV on the Sunday, so I went to the ground, and he wanted to know about the history of You Never Walk Alone, but they were supremely confident. They were thinking, it can't happen again, because it happens uh, when they got beat by Roma the year before. Mm-hmm. They, they were thinking it can't happen again. So they asked me outside the Shankly Gates, they asked me a question, they said, do you think Liverpool can do it? Do you think they can come back, expecting me to say, oh, I don't. I said, well, if, you know, it's Anfield. Anything can happen at Anfield. I thought we'd score three, but I thought they might get one, you see. Mm. But, you know, I, I think that was most people's. I think that was the, one, yeah, you know, something. But to keep them out and to do what we did, it, that sent shockwaves around football, around the world. Mm. It has. I don't think we realise it sometimes. That, you know, Barcelona fans are just. I mean, they were great at the ones in the ground because they clapped Liverpool off, didn't mm. they? But it was absolutely devastating for them. But they experienced what we experienced that night. They were in that ground. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how many videos we've all watched afterwards <laughs> of this match and interviews. And if you listen to the interview with uh, Mourinho and the one with Wenger, the way they talk about yeah. Anfield on a European night, and it is, it's just something out of this world that none of us can put our finger on because everyone comes together and human will just forces some sort yeah. of weird energy onto that ground and we turn into something else. Mm. I can't talk the mm. morning after. I was in work and I was like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I made up use of it all day because, <laughs> because I went to Barcelona and then after the 3-0 I walked out of that ground I thought, you know, that's it, it's over, come home. Uh, never went to Barca game. I never even went to Boozer. I've been going the halfway house for all the big games because I don't go to the game anymore. And um, went to the half. I didn't even go to the halfway house. I thought I can't be asked going there watching everyone's miserable kippers. So I watched it in the house on a stream, and then the stream went down. I think, you know. <laughs> so it was on my phone, refreshing live scores. And when that for when it come up four 0 it was it was like a JFK moment. I, I remember where I remember where it was forever when that. What when was it? What was it like up. in the ground when? That first goal went in. I, I remember thinking if we get a goal in the first ten, yeah, it's it, you know, what was it? on six, seven, I think. Six, mm-hmm. seven, yeah. Um, but like like one of you said, then the whole ground was just stood up all all yeah, the way, yeah. and you yeah. were just thinking, you, you just felt like I know Shankly said it, but you just felt like you were just sucking the ball forward in that second mm-hmm. half. You were just bringing it towards you, and um, there was definitely something in the air, and then it just got reinforced by that early goal. The early goal was important, wasn't it? But I remember speaking to people at half time and thinking, oh, you know. Can we do it? Because you think if you get an early goal, will you get a second soon? You know, mm. but it never happened, did it? But Liverpool's patience, they were just, you know, they were magnificent on the night. I think the patience and the way the way they dealt with Barcelona. And I was I was watching Messi and Suarez, you know, particularly. But Messi was he always stands still, doesn't he? Have you ever noticed he just stands in the middle of the in the middle of the pitch, waiting for the game to get the ball? And he was doing that as well all the time for the last 20 minutes of the second half and he, but he started to put his hands on his hips going it was happening all around mm. him he couldn't affect the game he did get the ball a couple of times and tried to do a slalom run mm. which I thought he's going to put it in the top corner here but he couldn't affect the game no. and that's what he was trying to warn the Barcelona players after the first game we cannot let Liverpool dominate us like this, but they yeah. couldn't stop it. He got a free kick, didn't he, late, late yeah. on? Yeah. yeah. In a similar sort it, of yeah, position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, no, but the wall jumped together. I don't know whether anyone noticed that. But the wall, like, did somebody practice? Yeah. Someone must have told him, what are you got to do this? Yeah. The, the, in the first leg, it, it, it 
ricochets off Gomez's shoulder mm. and you know what, Allison I, saved I, I probably wouldn't, that, wouldn't, I, wouldn't have ricocheted off I shoulders. wouldn't say this probably if we didn't get beat but knowing that we've we've come through the leg it, it almost feels nice to say you were there at the new camp where Messi done that free kick because it was it was a fucking unbelievable goal and the fact that we've gone through and we can say it doesn't didn't mean fuck all three goalies wouldn't have stopped it would they no it's just unbelievable but it shouldn't have been a free kick well, there was an argument no, also right. jockey there should they have had a walk because it was quite far out and there's an argument like because you they obviously he's taking his aim off the wall isn't he mm. so there's an argument should they have had a wall you know maybe a two man wall or something and just like say okay then go on yeah. and gives Alisson more of a chance then you yeah, know he's, but, he's got longer to see it you know it's still unstoppable so know? going back to the actual night anyway at the Barcelona and the nearest thing <clears> for me in within the region is then the Chelsea game in two too far. Yeah, different type of game. Like, it's a totally different yeah. type of game, but still more the emotional. Atmosphere, yeah. The atmosphere was and like and the UV game the same. Yeah, same yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we, we are a, we are we are something else. Our club, aren't we? I mean, look, as we, we spoke before about Man City, you see, have just done a domestic treble, and all they could do was shout about us. I mean, I mean, yeah. the plastic flags United, are great, though, aren't City, they? Chelsea. <laughs> you know? We haven't, we haven't, we haven't won a, a decent trophy since two thousand and six. Won one league cup in so where? Where are we now? Thirteen years. Mm. But look at the experiences we've had along the way. I know, but what I'm saying is, the, 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 we are, as far we're not an are we? Really, as a football club, in yep. their eyes, we shouldn't be anything. Yeah, but one, I think, club, one cup in 13 years. But the screen about. But the confused, you see, City fans have always been used to glorious failure. I don't think they know how to deal with success, <laughs> and like, and now they're successful. It's like when we were successful in the seventies and eighties, we were always saying, "Oh, the press go on about Man United," and I think that's the same mindset mm. they've got now. Mm. All and there was a great, uh, great stuff on on social media yesterday after that fella doing that <laughs> going in. There was a picture of Salah with a hat on, you know, a big front page of the Sunday Mirror or something, a little tiny thing. City win the cup, but <laughs> yeah. Salah gets a new hat. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's getting to them, isn't it? It's getting to well, them. But I think you know, I, I don't think in generalise. I, I reckon. A lot of their fact that all the fans who were used to being in the shadow of United will be embarrassed by a lot of the behaviour of City fans now. I think they would be, you know. But I, I disagree that we are all over the papers because I think the press hates us. Look, so, something happened in Barcelona the other week and the press were all over us, over the fans doing something. But then meanwhile, Gary Neville gets swilled by a lot of the City fans last week mm. and bullied. And we've heard nothing about it. I, I think I've seen one, one or two tweets about it. So I don't think the press... Uh, uh, Love Liverpool whatsoever, but when we're pulling I think, four 0 yeah. we're four 0 out of the attic against Barca, yeah. three 0 down, you know. Oh, the old think, then. Yeah. No, I think I mean I was talking to someone uh, at the weekend who's from you know we're from Liverpool, is he? But he lives in London, and he reckons there's a, a lot of Liverpool bias in the press in London because he said Liverpool is probably the best supported team in London, mm. and yeah. it might be, it might be. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't argue with those, uh, especially with now. That. Yeah, I mean, but you know what's it's the what's John Barnes factor maybe from you know you know we talked about years ago a lot of a like. lot of uh, a lot of people started supporting Liverpool. From, you know, we all know about United Cockney Reds from years ago. United have got a good United have got a good following, yeah. a good crowd. You can't you can't we hate them, but you can't knock them. But your cities and, you, and your and your Chelsea's they're just manufactured. But did you see that graphic years ago about? Teams who supported in London, mm. I think it ended up Tottenham were the best supporter, but Liverpool went far behind, mm. and that was a few years ago. I don't know what it's like now, but I just think it's mad though. As um, as now, you know, you look back towards well, you look back at why why we've got this fan base that we are, and yet now it, it's like it's happening again for me. Again, growing up on these stories, and I'm looking at this team now, going, it's happening again. All the stories I've heard, all those great nights and all those great performances, and travelling around doing this and that it, it's happening again yeah well we never I don't think you know you can't really compare to like the 70s and 80s team because you know uh, we did have challenges then but we're dealing with a Man City now which is as Jockey said you can't it, even the fact that we're competing them is a miracle really yeah with, with you know <clears throat> with all the uh, oil money that they've had behind them you know but I'd say what Klopp's building he's building a dynasty which will eventually compete with those teams because he gets his first trophy and I think then I think the floodgates will open I honestly do I've got that feeling uh, a similar feeling to you had you know when it when we were winning everything you know we just got to get that one trophy and hopefully it's going to be the I, I fear without sounding negative I, I, the only thing I fear is that 
I mean, touch what he does do this, but it's six finals on a bounce now, hasn't it? I think for him personally, that he, he's not won. So I feel it more for him. I, I want it more for him almost than I do for Liverpool. You know what he's done for this club, yeah, how he's turned yeah. around. You, you want him to get have a, have a break and just, you know what, you deserve this. And that's the only thing I'm, that makes me nervous. Well, my favourite saying is, I, everyone says to me, what scores are going to be? What do you think? What do you think? I said, don't do predictions. I just do nerves and anxiety. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> that one. You, you see, know? When, when, when Spurs, when Spurs, we're not scared of Spurs, but we're scared of getting beat by Spurs. Yeah. yeah. Because mm-hmm. if we get beat by Ajax, Ajax will go home to Holland and we won't hear nothing about it. You know what I mean? But Spurs, they've never won a European yeah. trophy. I, I think they did win one in the 60s or something. First cup, I don't know. But they've never won that. And I don't mind Spurs, but they'll. You know what I mean? They'll be they'll get the bragging rights and and we'll get slaughtered. But mm. was it Ajax whose video was going around on social media about versus City fans? Yeah. When yeah, where, where they're in the square over in yeah. Amsterdam and they're having a party and yeah. it's just <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. And then you go to Man City's yeah. and you're like you are a, w- a lone woman in the front yeah, shouting yeah. Sane, Sane, Sane. <laughs> they had they had a hundred thousand people singing Tadish on, Tadish on fire. That's yeah, they, it. Oh. That's what Liverpool would be like, right? So it would have been obviously Ajax would have been a better final because it's a European mm. final, Premier League mm. final is not the same, isn't it? But I think yeah, I think Tottenham on on the day can beat anyone. They proved that with City, can't they? You know, they're a lot tougher opponents than Ajax. Mm. I think Liverpool playing Ajax is a different prospect. Great young team, but you saw what happened to them against Tottenham. They just collapsed. Didn't Experience they? in the end got to them, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, but you know Liverpool have beaten. You know Tottenham twice this season. I mean, we outclassed them at Wembley, but a one-off game, you just don't know. You just don't know. Do Kane's back. I hope Kane's back. Yeah, I hope he plays because <laughs> Moore is fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Takes, takes three games to get him. Um, He'll be on the bench. Watch it. Like, so we, we'll finish off on the Madrid, Madrid talk again. But one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was just to talk about your experiences. So, Stan, with you, Paul, what was your first? Uh, European away experience oh it was uh, Wembley 78 for the final against Bruges and I didn't even know I was going so I'm an 8 year old kid I get up to go to school I get my school uniform on I'm sitting there I mean I go to walk out the door my dad says where are you going I'm going to school he went to sit down he said go and get changed what do you mean he said go and put your kit on what kit he said go and put your Liverpool kit on why Locked out the door, and it was a Luton box van, and I could just—I remember the shutter getting whizzed up at the back, and as the shutter get whizzed up, all my other cousins put their heads out, <laughs> and so I've ran out in my school uniform, and I've even got chains, and I've locked in the back, and there must have been about twenty people in the back of this uh, Luton box van, all on the way to Wembley, and it was me Uncle Ronnie who was going, and my cousin's name at the time was Ian St John Dunn, and he's in the back with his tracky with Ian St John Dunn on the back. I got changed in rapid time, got in the back of the van, can't remember the journey there, but I can remember getting to the ground and thinking, oh my God, there is thousands of Liverpool fans here. I think, I think it was 100,000 then, wasn't it, Wembley? Mm, mm. And there must have been 70,000 Liverpool fans there at the, at, yeah. at the match. And I always remember in the match, we were there, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always remember that when we scored and we were all jumping up and down, you could feel the stadium bouncing. The one thing people talk about is like about uh, all our tourists and our new fans that was the match where I thought Liverpool are absolutely massive because as you say the ground it was mainly Liverpool fans but I didn't recognise any any of them and I always remember there's a lad from uh, Kirby called Smigger well known Liverpool fan from years ago he always used to wear a scarf like a student but he was like at every away match at the front of the special you know getting off the train and <clears> then <throat> And at that Bruges game, he had a Bruges scarf on, like a student. You know, to see if anyone said anything to him. <laughs> and like, uh, it was distinctive because I remember thinking, we, you know, we're as big as Man United now in terms of mm. you know global appeal. Because there was, there was few, you know, there was obviously loads of scouts there, but I think they were outnumbered by people who not from Liverpool. Mm. So I think this this idea that look back to the seventies, eighties, I was all scouts. I think that final proved that it wasn't, you know. I mean, a lot of people must have got tickets off, like they do now, 
the, the, fo- the football family. That's what must have happened, you know. How did they, how, how did they do, like, the allocation then, back then? Was well, it, like it was 50, uh, serial numbers. <laughs> <laughs> the, alloc- the allocation was in our van, was, we had three tickets. <laughs> <laughs> the allocation and was given a turnstile, fella, two quiz. <laughs> <laughs> quiz <laughs> on the way, yeah? Everyone got in. Yeah. Really? Everybody you, got in. You see, you see nowadays, that you see the paper headlines and about the youth for distribution, the allocation. Yeah, yeah. Go back to 78, and it'll be the same medal. It'll be the same. It'll be reading the same article. I think you might have got slightly more in 78. You know, maybe 20,000. I don't know. We got 16 and a half for this, didn't we, for Madrid? Yeah. But you know, you've never had big allocations, and you know, it's been, it's always been a struggle to get, to get those tickets. But I always remember, it was based upon season tickets or like a, a priority voucher, mm. and it was a serial number. So if the season tickets come uh, out, it'd be like two, seven, nine, so you'd, uh, and then you get the, you know. So it oh. didn't have to be a. It wasn't based on a loyalty thing, so you could have a season ticket. Just a lucky dip. Just a lucky. It was a lucky. Lot you got a voucher as well, didn't you? I remember you used to get priority vouchers. vouchers yeah, yeah, priority. Yeah. And if I remember they were the weird red. I mean, yeah. colour blind, but I, I always <laughs> remember like gardening it with your life. Yeah. And you'd get that at an earlier round, mm. and you'd keep that. And there's mm. always people outside going, "Can I have your voucher? Can I have your voucher?" So you'd have to. Have you got all the vouchers? And I remember something mm-hmm. like you said, Jockey, it's like a lot of these times, these days days out on trips, the match is almost an inconvenience. You almost don't remember the match, do you? Social occasion, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I didn't as he's he's gone on about seventy eight. I didn't uh, I didn't go to Rome in eighty four. I don't know why. Uh, but I never went to Rome in eighty four. My my first one was a first final was eighty five, Hazel. Um and going on about allocations there. We got into the ground, we all know what happened in 84 at Rome about the trouble the Pill fans uh, got such a hard time off the Roma fans. And we get into the ground in 85 and you look down the Juve end, they've got a full end there and then our end, we've only got a half an end, haven't we? Two thirds, yeah. yeah so we were outnumbered. We were outnumbered um, and we all know what happens, mm. we're not going to go into that. But mm. yeah, so my, but the build up to that final was absolutely brilliant again. We Did you go to Blankenberg? Did you go to the final? No, we went dire, it was Dire Straits doing the tour at the time as well. It was the fair when CD was, because Everton played in Rotterdam, Rotterdam yeah. Yeah. and loads of the lads went over. And yeah. Old Dire Straits started the money for nothing tour, mm. and the CD was just getting developed, and it was a Dutch, yeah, it was yeah. Phillips who were doing it. So loads went sort of to the Dire Straits tour, then yeah. to the Rotterdam match, and then went to the yeah. Liverpool final. Because yeah. I've got pictures at home still with the lads with, with Everton scarves on their Everton hats mm. in the square <laughs> in Brussels. I went to watch End. We got off the uh, ferry, and there was a well-known character who made a speech on the ferry, and uh, I've been we've been selling the end. A magazine that we used to do, you know, the fanzine, football fanzine thing. Uh, and with the money that we made from selling the end, we went down and had a breakfast. And uh, there was, everything was calm on the boat. It was about seven in the morning. And as we were pulling into Ostend, about nine, we got go up to where the where the boat was. And there's this character making a speech. Everyone knew who he was. But we'd been telling this American when we were having our... But he said, what are, you, what are you guys doing on the boat? You know, he said, we're going over <laughs> to the European Cup final. He said, oh... Will there be any trouble there? I said, nah, there'll be no trouble there. It'll be like, you know, jeweler shops will be going or whatever, like, but there'll be no trouble. And he must have been reading, you know, after high school, you know, what bullshit to stay with. But he saw this lad making the speech and went, is he the leader? Because <laughs> <laughs> he came, he made the speech and it was a brilliant, it was a biblical speech, you know. Uh, I made from Black Rose, was it? He might have been from Black Rose, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> it was it was a great speech, but um, I, me- I remember thinking, you know, it was like, in those times, every, everyone who got off that boat, I think there was Man United fans coming from somewhere else, and there was a bit of trouble in it at Ostend, you know. But they, every, most people went to Blankenberg, but a lot went to Ostend as well. So we stayed, we stayed there in Ostend, and it was great for the first two nights. But you know, then things started to unravel, you know. I went up to Blankenberg. I probably wasn't on your um, boat then. We went up to Blankenberg. Blankenberg was like the the black pool of. Belgium. Yeah. It was like a seaside resort. We arrived there at about a full boatload of, a, I don't know, what would you say? Thousands of us yeah, arrived yeah. in Blankenberg. There was four copies on duty. And they had them, they had them bikes, <laughs> they had them bikes. Do you have them bikes in Ponton? You used to go where four years can get on them, mm. like four wheeler. It's like, and, and they had them for hire, and everyone was just bombing around Blankenberg. Oh, what a trip that was until, mm. until what happened later. Um, mm. But yeah, that's all the ingredients again. This Madrid one, this 
this Madrid one's got the ingredients to be a great, great final. Mm. You've got your Benidorm, people going to Benidorm, Barcelona. It's easy to get to, people are moaning about it. It's certainly easier than Athens, Istanbul, Kiev, and can you imagine if we were in Baku? I want to pull you now on your on the podcast we done. You went Liverpool won't will probably win the Europa League than they will Champions League because yeah. we don't do we easy finals. Uh oh. Yeah, we did it. Well, there you go. I said we don't. I said we don't do easy finals. On the spot. Yeah, on the spot. Faith. No, he said he said just, we, we, I just can't see us getting there because yeah. it's true, innit? We never ever do it. Too easy, it. but um, but uh, our, our Kevin, my lad, he's flying in from Australia, um, and it's cheaper for him to fly. I'm saying it's not easy to get to. I'm saying it's easy to get to. It is, but all the it's like anything, all, all the prices go up. But he's flying in from Perth in Australia, and it's cheaper for him to pl- fly from Australia to Madrid than for someone to fly from Liverpool to Madrid. And there's a plane leaving there on the I think it's the Tuesday night from Perth, and it's yeah. like it's like a um, it's like a football special. Mm. Every scouser who's who's over there, is, I've got to go to that final, even without a ticket, just for the occasion. Because mm. well, it's what got you the ingredients, hasn't what it? What you were saying though about the match gets in the way. I remember uh, we were having a great time in Porto. We were having sing songs, you know, all sorts of songs were coming out. Everyone was doing different things, and we were going, "We've got to go to match now." Yeah. You know, and it was <laughs> torrential rain, <laughs> torrential rain, and we were waiting for the taxi. Mono, who I usually go to, to the away matches with, but he knows everything about all routes. And I said, Get, "Walk here to the metro." The people I was with, Brian Reed and someone else, were saying, "No, we get a cab." Anyway, we get a cab. We miss Manny's go. We got in just after Manny's goal at half time. We looked at our watch and went, let's get back to the town. <laughs> That's what we did. A ridiculous thing yeah. to do. But at the time, it seemed like the most sensible thing to do. Like, oh, the match is over now. You know, we beat, you know, do you know what I mean? Mm. But that's the same with Barcelona. I can see what you say. We were on the um, on the beach all day on the Wednesday before the Barcelona game. Went, went for a pint with you, didn't we? And uh, caught up with Jockey. And you're almost like, <sighs> Fucking hell, we've got to go up the ground now. Yeah, yeah, just a sunny day, you were all your yeah. mates, a few cans on the beach, you're like, this is great. So, Jockey just uh, mentioned the flight from Perth. My brother's on it with his two sons and his missus. None of them got tickets and they're coming over. Mm. <laughs> just want to be part of it, that's what Yeah, it is, well, they were it? in Kiev, they were in Istanbul, they were in Athens. Mm. You know. your, your kids, I think he's on the same flight. I think they're on a five day in and out. I mean, it takes you five days. It, well, it takes you about two weeks to recover if you're going to Australia. They're, they're all flying over on this plane and then they're all flying mm. back on the Monday or mm-hmm. something. It's like a five day turnout. And I'm thinking, how horrific would that be? But then these are people who don't get a chance to see Liverpool. Mm. And can you mm. imagine what that plane, that plane's yeah, going to yeah. be brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be like, a, like it's like going to be like that. No, them London trains. Plane. No, them London trains used to get to go and see the pool. It's going to be like that, but ten times, yeah. fifteen times longer, or something. You know, I mean, that's that's the that's the point about all these trips. You know, to exotic places, isn't there? Whether you, you know Baku would have been interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, with the yeah, other, no. you, you would, it would have been interesting. <laughs> Not having that, sorry. <laughs> you wouldn't be getting flights from Perth going there, I don't think. But um, so no. the great, you know, the great thing about this, we've been to all these countries which we probably never visited before, mm. uh, or or we would have gone to because you know you, you wouldn't necessarily go to Kiev, would you? Mm. To the Ukraine on holiday, it's not going to. You might go to Odessa. I think a lot of people went to Odessa, mm. didn't they? And he was saying, oh, it's absolutely... Okay, so it was the beach. Yeah, it was absolutely yeah. brilliant. People had a brilliant time there, you know. So people are experiencing all these places and think, it's going to be easy, Madrid. But uh, we've all seen that it's not as easy because yeah. well, of the flight problem. Did all four of you go to Kiev? No. No. I did. Did you? Yeah, I went to Kiev, yeah. No. Kiev. But we had a gig. Mm. We had a gig the next day. So uh, well, In Kiev? To, no, in Surrey. Right. Uh, so I had to get <laughs> I had to get a flight from Pops. Kiev to Ankara, Ankara to Istanbul, Istanbul to London the next morning, oh. and it was you know it was terribly, but we yeah, we performed like, you know. Webster said we had Webster on last week. It will be, in, and he was he was saying like yeah, he said when he was on that stage in Shevchenko Park, it yeah, was yeah. the best. He said he was crying at the end of it, wasn't he? Yeah, it was a magical time, like yeah, it was a magical <clears> time. You were on stage, like, weren't you? Yeah, well, me and John Power uh, went on before, you know, and uh, I think I I, I blagged it because I, I sang uh, one of the verses in Fears of Anfield Road from 2009, you know, uh, the Hillsborough song, you know. Mm. Um, so that's why I was there, you know, but I think John started doing some of his own songs and realised, I just started singing Liverpool songs, going, Peter, can you do some Liverpool songs with us? Yeah. <laughs> but it was just a, it was, it was a fantastic atmosphere. And I think... 
the club have got to get a bit of credit for that because the club, I think there's Tom Cassidy at the club and it works with Boss magazine. And it's a bit of a risk, you know, mm. a park in Kiev, you know, uh, putting it on with, you know, with the club's endorsements. It's a mm. bit of a risk, but everything went right and nothing went wrong. It was just, you know, apart from the PA, it wasn't the greatest PA in the world. But it didn't matter because it was the stage was surrounded. So people were breaking out into songs behind you and then another song would start to the right here. Another, it was just amazing atmosphere. Yeah. Great atmosphere. And then the match started. <laughs> Do you know what? I didn't, I didn't even go near the stage because these European finals, you see people who you haven't seen for years, people just turn up. Yeah, people yeah, who aren't yeah. going to match anymore. You walk on, you see like Jimmy and Bobby and who you haven't seen since like 1986 or something, you know what I mean? It's just... The all occasions, but mm. it's like, I can't wait. You've just reminded me about the stage in Istanbul. Do you remember yes, that? Off, oh. You will all die. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I got on the stage because all the lads up to Coral and the Zeus right, yeah, yeah. and we were all and anyway, so I've ended up I've got loads of pictures of me on the stage with a big orange beard on, looking yeah. like a little uh, leprechaun. And <laughs> <laughs> and that was so funny, but I never had to drink that the whole time when I was in Istanbul. We you wanted not, to save it, I like? No, no. I, I wasn't well. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't well. I was on medication, though. I wasn't allowed to drink on this medication. And you know what? It's most probably the best final, and I remember everything mm. yeah. mm. for me, because what had happened, I'd phoned... So listen, me. children, don't be drinking <laughs> in Madrid. No, 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 this is just... It, it was just for me, but it took my son, who was five, my nephew at the time, uh, so there was a few of us, so I wanted to look after them, but we booked into the team hotel, and I hadn't told them. So when we were going into the team hotel, and it was like all airport security, they were going, why is this? And I'm going, oh, they're just maybe expecting some trouble. So, so I was getting them out the hotel early in the morning because I didn't want to, I didn't want them to see anything so anyway we've had a great time in the square that day and that square was amazing mm. and do you remember all the I never went Super Croat Ego Biscuit oh. used to be atrocious banner which was yeah, went yeah. right round I remember just looking at these banners and thinking wow so, oh. <laughs> yeah so these must have spent hours do you know when days getting these banners ready and the best one out of them all was in the midst of all that someone had got an hotel sheet from the bed and wrote this is a sheet yeah yeah well that, 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 appeared, that was in Barcelona a couple of years before that. that's it? my yeah. favourite Le Pool flag by the way Same. this is a sheet he was on the Ramblers <laughs> this is a sheet I never this. went to Istanbul because my mum was uh, ser- you know, terminally ill and I couldn't go on there I asked the doctor I had, I had my t- ticket in my hand on the Friday the doctor came round on the Saturday. I was supposed to be going on the Monday, and said, "You know, what? What do you think? Will me? You know, will, will she last a week?" Type of thing. He went, "Say, I can't say yes or no," and that was May. My mum lived till September, <laughs> uh, but I had to get. I gave me ticket to my brother-in-law. You know, uh, but it was one of them. It was. I was watching the match that with one. me mate. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the one. I was watching the match with me mate, Mick Potter. We couldn't go out to a pub because we'd been to most of the earlier rounds. Mm. And we couldn't go out to the pub to watch it because he thought he didn't like watching the pub anyway. And so me and Mick, and he, he couldn't go because his partner was having a baby and it was due that week. So we couldn't go. So it was like, and it, at the end we were both crying our eyes out. Mm. You know, after the fight we were crying our eyes out. You know. You're going on there that like you were going on the Monday. The Monday obviously um, Istanbul was a midweek one, weren't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when they changed it to the Saturday, I thought, ah, yeah. you know what I mean, but. It seems all right now, doesn't it? Yeah, you get used to everything, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we, we adapt, don't we? <laughs> you get used to everything, but we adapt. I, I feel awful saying this as well, but I I, I got off at half time from there. Oh, here's oh. one of them. So when we've got to the airport the next day, and in the airport they had like a tent built outside yeah. to try and ferry everyone through, and I'm, I looked and my mate, uh, is, he had the Anfield boozer, Batesy, I don't oh, know yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, Gary. Yeah. So Gary's got his head in his hands and I seen his mate next to him, older Gary, and I've went, what's wrong with him? And he went, he left at half time. <laughs> and I remember singing, he left at half time. <laughs> and Istanbul, he yeah. left at half time. And everyone was singing it. He just looked up as if to say, they, oh, they, off they, you. Those people have become the lepers oh. of the uh, Liverpool community. We were, um, <laughs> we were oh. stood at the back, gutted, 3-0 down. Stood at the back, got it. This fella come up here. I think it, everyone have jester hats on or something. In, it's, it's I hats. remember those hats. This yeah. fella come up with a jester hat. He was half scouts and half all sorts of things. And we were all gutted and hurt. Uh, and he started, he started shouting, What's the matter with you? We're going to win this 4 3. And someone had like just about 30 of us or someone. Someone, we all got to someone said, 
fuck off now, Bez. And like, just carried on his way. And like, I, 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 like, I'm like full time. Everyone's gone. Where's that fella? It's like an um, like a ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I, I, mean? I didn't even, I didn't even go to Istanbul. I'm talking. I got off from. I was in the 80s in Bootle. Yeah. I was in the 80s in Bootle, and I three and I just, I just thought, oh, fuck this. I'm going home. Walked down to my nan's who lived on Linnock Lane, and uh, I got in, and it was a three one, and she went, what are you doing? They scored, you know. And I went, oh, it's over, and then it was three two, and I went, fuck this, and, and I was back in the pub just as a. Uh, it must have been five minutes after the after it went three three. Yeah. But I felt fucking awful the fact that I'd, I'd gone off and missed those that ten minutes. I've got a mate. My mate left at half time, and um, him is so out. So coming a, out now. Him <laughs> <laughs> got a booze on. You boxing. know you are. Got a booze on boxer. Him is out. Fell and his brother left at half time. Jumped in a taxi. And as you remember in Istanbul, the, the the ground was nowhere near. East I Apple, was on the moon. It? So they was jumped it? in yeah. a taxi. They jumped in a taxi and they're going down the road three 0 down. And all these canaries, Catuso, Catuso. Uh, they, 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 they don't know what's going on. The fella can't speak English, it's all in Turkish. Um, and then they had a big scream towards the end. Shevchenko, obviously, the two mm. that save. Shevchenko, uh, there's a few others. And uh, they've just turned, said to turn that fucking off. They've turned the, turned the radio <laughs> off. Got the taxi to the hotel, walked out the hotel, uh, walked out the, got out the taxi, walked into the hotel, and there's, the, there's uh, Stephen Gerrard left in the European oh, Cup. Oh. I mean, you get off at half time, but everyone's got a story. I was there, I was in Istanbul, I'd love to have been in town. Because yeah. all the Evertonians at half time were all phoning each other up, let's get out, let's get on it. I'd yeah. love to have seen all that, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, uh, at half time, two stories. First one was, I'm with me five year old, I've got me phone out and there's 48 like missed calls and messages mm. and I've just I can remember just lashing it on the track <laughs> and going, fuck you fuck out. and as I'm doing that I turn around and my son's taking his lip pool top off I went what are you doing and he's just about to throw it he went why did you bring me here dad <laughs> and then what he was trying to be playing with me Lego <laughs> I went no lad listen I'd know. rather have been playing with me Lego <laughs> <laughs> so it was like we had to calm him down it was a few of us and I said no listen we'll pull this we'll pull this back do you know what I mean and that's when mm. everyone started singing walk on then at half time mm. and it was mm. like it was weird it started as a mumble mm. and then it just became yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger and it became something else so I said yeah. listen do you know what I mean? I, I mean, they turned around to me and went, I'm not being funny, lad, but if we fucking win this, I'll fucking sprout wings, sprout wings and fucking fly yeah. off. Yeah. At the end, I'm going, go ahead, lad. You know, we, you know, we all say we gained about, you know, we gained millions of fans that night, didn't we? And we were over in uh, Munich recently uh, for the game and Mono sort out, he met this fella called Dirk at Augsburg a couple of years ago and he put us up, put five of us up in his house. And he, he did a story for us that he became a Liverpool fan after Istanbul. He was on his honeymoon. He um, he was with his wife on the honeymoon. He said, I want to watch the, the match. And she said, oh, no, let's go to the pool. Anyway, he saw Liverpool were getting beat 3-0 mm-hmm. at half time. But then he heard he never walk alone. And he's a clone fan. And he said, uh, after that, he said, I, I must watch the second half just to see what happens. And after that, you know, Liverpool is his team now. You know, he, he's still a Cologne fan as well, but yeah. he said, I need to meet these people. I need to meet these people. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, what great, they did that, you know. It's a great thing, and we, I spoke to Webster quite a lot about this, because uh, maybe you're the same, but for me growing up, I think, I think Scousers are a weird bunch in the sense of, I think we have something great, but it's like we want it to be ours, and that's it. And I think mm, yeah. you, can't, you don't want anyone else to have it. So, for example, go in the match when you're young, and you see all Johnny Foreigner coming or travelling from down south, I used to fucking hate it, going like, listen, this is our thing I'm from Liverpool, you know, this is just yeah. for us. But then when you hear stories like that, it's, unbelievable, it's impossible yeah. not yeah. to. No. And, and Webster says this thing, he says, he says, the amount of messages he gets and people saying the one thing I wish was, is I wish I was a scouser and was part of all that. And you can't, well, remember like, had, you can't hold people, No. you can't remember say, well, that you're not allowed to have this because it's ours. Remember that scarf used to be, uh, you might remember, but it was like in the 70s and 80s. Supporters like, uh, all over the sports world. All over the world. Someone world, put one but, in the shop yesterday. Supporters all over the world. It's a brilliant scarf and yeah. that's what we used to think. But at the time, I remember being a kid and my nan used to live in, um, just off Oakfield Road there. And I used to uh, get off the bus and walk past Gutters. And when Everton were at home, this was like early 70s, they had the whole of Priory Road was full of coaches. And, you know, it was 30 odd coaches. I and mean, I used to think, you know, Will we ever be as big as that? Because when Liverpool at all, there was two or three coaches, Winsford, Tamworth or somewhere, that was it. 
But then that was before Shankly started. You know, we won the Youth Cup 72, 73. Then we, uh, then we went 75, 76, Youth Cup again. Started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, yeah, I think that parochialism of, like, this is ours. You'd either want to be, you know, a team who was parochial, and don't, or you want to be one of the biggest clubs in the world. Mm. And we've, you know, we, we want to be one of the biggest clubs in the world, don't we? Mm. That, that parochialism kept Everton back, I think. It really has kept In the same back, breath, you know? I wouldn't mind building the wall around the pool and Viva the Scouts Republic. <laughs> <laughs> After that, um, getting back to that Istanbul final, you eventually got back into Saxon Square. It must have been three o'clock. Because the game ended the next day, didn't it? Yeah, it we actually won the European Cup on the 26th of yeah. May. Uh, got back into Saxon Square. Mm. I couldn't even have that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was late. Yeah. Time's difference, yeah. Couldn't, um, <laughs> couldn't even have a bevy. No, the adrenaline. Like, where, where the players Same, were fucked. Yeah. We were fucked. We'd been through the ringer. Got into Saxon Square. Went down one of them alleys, there was all bars down, alleys weren't there, and uh, bumped into, fell off the market, <clears> Billy, <throat> who's always moaning. And we've just, until, that's probably Liverpool's biggest game ever. People will argue that about Barcelona. That yeah. Game. Istanbul was bigger than that because there was a trophy at the end of it. Um, and Billy's always moaning. Anyway, he sits down, fucking great that way, it, Billy? You're a being, you know, 3-0 down. And he's sitting down, he bought me a bevy and he was gone. But Jockey, you gotta remember, this is our greatest game ever, he's gone. Jockey, sissy's not the answer though, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Billy, I can say off, lads. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but couldn't drink, yeah. couldn't drink after that, just mm. wouldn't go down, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it gets that way, doesn't it, after the final, mm. sometimes. And then the oncoming. After, after, that, after that Barcelona game, like the next day, I was knackered and like emotionally. Mm. I was just, I had a little nap in the afternoon. Yeah. I was just so, I was just knackered after it. Mm. Absolutely done in. Is it is it is a business? Is like football is a business. Do you think they long for like football clubs long for those comebacks like the Istanbul, like Barcelona, to get those supporters that you mentioned, like from outside of well to go fair play. I'll just I'm jump su- in there. I'll just jump in there because of course it is, isn't it? But but Liverpool FC for a long time used like um, people with flares and all that was part of the um, promotion of mm. Istanbul. But at the same time, we're banning people from taking them to the match. So it's, you know what I mean? It's all a bit mixed up. People are t- yeah. saying as the... Bit uh, of hypocrisy. Pe- yeah, people are saying, keep saying, and they have been saying for years, the bubble's going to burst. But then the likes of the pool, what they've done to Barcelona and what the likes of what um, Spurs done to Ajax, it's going mm. to it's keep... It, it, football's... It's like we're back into the golden era, yeah. isn't Those it? I mean, even, even what City, even what City done with that yeah. company goal... Company goal hasn't it? Company hasn't hit the ball all season and and, and yeah. scores that for football at this moment is great again. Th- those two Champions League games, Liverpool, Barca, then Ajax, Tottenham, yeah. you couldn't get more dramatic games, mm. could you? Ever? Like it's just unbelievable that what had happened. And in a way, I was thinking, oh no, they're taking a bit of a shy on for come back here. <laughs> yeah. But you've got to give it to you know Tottenham what they did there because they were dead and buried, weren't they? Mm. But that's what football. That's what can happen. The beautiful game. You know, that's what can happen. And you see now you see that all the time. You look know, at the playoffs it. as well now. Even yeah. taking Derby. Up, look, all the games are brilliant, Charlton the other day. All yeah, the games yeah. are just yeah. and we've been blessed to be at load of them. Arguably mm. the two best European finals in the uh, Europa Cup and the Champions League. Istanbul and Dortmund, Dortmund and Alves. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And we yeah. you know, and we were involved eighteen in. years ago. Just the other yeah. day, that. And, that, and, that, and that was another one that was on the back of the Michael Owen final, where we we went, we hired a minibus, eight of us went to the final. Then I remember coming out of the ground thinking we've just robbed this cup. Yeah, <laughs> we've just robbed the F-O, Cup, yeah. FA Cup here. Yeah. And then obviously the first port of call is when you're in. Uh, it was because it was Cardiff, wasn't it? Yeah. So we've all gone to Amsterdam in the van. We went to Amsterdam. Then we drove to Zamfort on the outskirts and there's a racetrack there. We parked on the racetrack mm. and then made our way to Eindhoven and then made our way to Dortmund. And what a trip that was. Yeah. What a season it's just that was. Been, yeah. We've just been blessed at the fact that we've been involved in all these different games. I mean, we were involved in the greatest Premier League game ever, the 4-3 against Newcastle. Mm. I think one of the greatest mm-hmm. comebacks ever, Barcelona, Istanbul, Barcelona. The the um, the game in Dortmund, just unbelievable games. Even West Ham. That's one I mean, thing I've, my hope is for Madrid. Since I've been alive, we've won every cup and it's been dramatic. There's been, you've been fucking, like you say, the West Ham, Gerard last minute, Mike Lowen coming two goals. Um, 
the last one against Arsenal. Alaves winning on pens, Birmingham mm. that season. Sorry, Alaves was the golden mm. goal. Birmingham was on pens. Mm. I just love this final in Madrid. We just twat them two, three nil. Yeah, just get it out the way. Just, yeah. just we dominate <laughs> so them. My heart. And it's just, there's no, no drama. There's, there's, no there's no nerves and anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Through. There's no talking points. It's just a dominant. The two display. brilliant, the two brilliant managers. You know, I think the two brilliant managers, and they both play football the right way. Mm. You know, if you were facing a Mourinho, you know, you'd be thinking, oh, that, what type of games this going to be? You know. But now that, that style of football is gone and that's the great thing about what's happening in Premier League and Europe mm. and everywhere else really. People are attacking. Mm. People are trying to play f- attacking football. Mm. That idea of putting the, you know, parking the bus, the Mourinho era, is, it's gone, hasn't it? Mm. It's gone, which is great for football fans, isn't it? Yeah, no one wants that at the club no more, do they? No. And hence that's why... Pulis is no longer in the Prem. <laughs> and Sam, <laughs> and Sam, 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 big Sam. If you're just going to pick then a, a favourite, f- forget winning trophies, <clears throat> it could be for the lad you were with, for the memories, something funny happens, what would be your favourite European away that you've just done? Valencia, 19, uh, 1998, was it? Yeah, I think you so, yeah. The cup. yeah. All ends up in Benidorm, which that's why I'm saying this fine. You're not obsessed with Benidorm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going in again soon or something? <laughs> Listen, played Valencia. I'm a bit concerned got, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Got to Valencia, right? Um, got the coach from Benidorm. The night before was just what it was. It was just Benidorm. November the third, it was as well. And then we come out the game, um, come out the game, and got the coach. It's like two or three coaches of us back to Benidorm. It's about 500 scouts heading back to Ben. November the third. <laughs> um, we were getting back into Benidorm for three, four in the morning, and I was thinking, oh, it's going to be shit. This fucking hell! What a night we had! It was just great. Was just There's a great little fishing village near Benidorm <laughs> called Zavi. You're more fortunate yeah. yeah. than me. Yeah. Uh, I'd say for for um, I'd say for for an event, I'd say Paris eighty one. Yeah, you know, for me because we went over on. Uh, we went over on the Saturday, so we arrived in Garden Nord, I think it was on the Saturday. And the game wasn't sort of Wednesday. You know, it's like we made the whole week of it, you know. Mm. But, um, I mean, I've told this story loads of times, but we did literally uh, help hunt for this uh, Adidas shop that had rare Adidas. And, uh, you know, like they, when Ian Brown and that went to Argentina and they found this shop, I mean, we, we, we were told that this, you know, mythical place existed and it didn't. You know, no one was going to Versailles or the Louvre. Could you? Yeah, you were just looking for this, but we had an absolutely brilliant time, and we were in by the Pigalle most nights, and, and there was all sorts going on, and it was like we just had a fantastic time. Didn't see one Real Madrid fan, uh, or I think they mm. must have been in other parts of the yeah, city. Yeah, seen three in an hour before they, the yeah. game. Yeah, they don't travel with the top the Spanish. Do they never had many in the ground? Did they? Not no, either? no. We and like you're thinking, they're a, a European giant. Where are they all? And, but Liverpool just took over the whole city and. Mm. It was a fantastic, uh, fantastic week, you know. It's the same here for me, it was Paris. I'm a 10-year-old kid. I got told a couple of days before that I was going, but I was going anyway. If anyone wants to read the book, it's in that book. You've wrote a book? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're on it? <laughs> no, I think we all are. Jockey's next. Called? Jockey's next. Anyway, so I never had a ticket, and as a kid, you're relentless when... I just wanted to get in the ground, and all I was worried about was getting the ground, so I was like... Where's my ticket? Where's my ticket? Where's my ticket? And then three hours before, they say to me, "You haven't got a ticket." And I'm like, "What?" So our other kids asked. He was coming over from Australia. They his mate took over the other, other side of wherever we were, and he said, "Go and see Steve." So I made my way over. In them days, you're just allowed to go where you want. I found him and all his mates. They're all the lads from round by ours, round by the Crown, off these tanks. All lively lads, and they were going, "Listen, there's how we get tickets." So. I had to do a, 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 a sort of crash course in pickpocketing <laughs> <laughs> ten, at 10 years ten of age. Well, I just wanted to get in a match. I didn't know any different. That's how it was. I didn't know it was it was wrong. It was just, here's what we do. We do this, we do that, you do that, and we see what happens at the end of this hour. Anyway, mm. I think we ended up with about 17 tickets. And <laughs> there was a little corner that had to be ripped off. It was like just a yeah, little yeah, serrated yeah. edge and like right, a triangle yeah, yeah. got ripped yeah. off the corner. So I ended up with about... I don't know, 20 bits of triangles, which is no good because you needed the other bit. But we mm. ended up with 17 full tickets and we all got in the match. And that was just amazing. Mm. The song, 
uh, on the dole drink and wine yeah, yeah, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I always remember everyone was like be careful about this French riot squad they'll just bat you yeah, yeah. and there was none of that it was just pictures oh yeah there was murder I've seen a video somewhere there was yeah. absolute chaos yeah, yeah. because never, they said there was going to be a ring of steel around the ground no one turn up without tickets was Bath think there ring, <laughs> ring of steel and all that and like you know it was all over the French press because there was trouble with the riot police I mean and the French riot police, you know, they are, they are uh, notorious, aren't they? You know? mm. Worst final, going to be Athens, hasn't it? Oof, yeah. I've heard that loads of people scary. say that, you know. That best, was absolutely... Best. Like, we went to Kiev last year and got beat, and everyone come back and said, what a brilliant time. Athens, what the a job. Yeah. It was in a ground where it wasn't even built for football. We've heard that one before, mm. you know what I mean? I um, the amount of people I know went to Athens with a ticket and didn't even get in. Mm. So they were saying yeah. to you on your approach to the turnstile, put your ticket in the air. Mm. So you can imagine what was going on. Some old little ten year olds were running around grabbing your ticket. Off. It was just <laughs> it was just chaos. Chaos. But there was you know um, where the chaos was. I got fed up of trying to get in and getting you know just got fed up because you couldn't you know, had to get in. You had to get no. to the compound. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was fed up to trying to get there. So we thought we'd walk somewhere else. We walked five minutes around to another area. And it was empty, yeah. empty, completely empty, and no one put that information. It was just, mm. you know, I don't know whether that was a neutral entrance or whatever, but we got in that way, and uh, we were saying to them, go around there and tell people that there's loads of ten stars here and they're empty. Mm. Just shaking the heads, you know. It was an Olympic chaos. stadium, wasn't it? So it was, yeah. it was built for <laughs> athletics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just they, they never uh, sort of mm. sort of the approaches out towards towards the ground no one was directing anyone he was just mm. I remember they was they were they were spraying you and then didn't you have they were hitting you with pink balls and whatever colour you were hit with was the severity of it if you got hit with a, a red one you were getting it do you know what I mean because they go in and get you so that that's what I was witnessing and we were there was a family of us and I, I just thought immediately back to Arzal mm. and Arzal was the only match that I've ever been to where I feared for my life but besides Hillsborough, but Arzal was, I thought, wow, this is mm. heavy. And mm. that was very, very, very similar to him in, mm. uh, in Athens. That was scary. I mean, that's it. There's been some absolutely glorious, fantastic experiences, but there's been some really, you know, low. I mean, Athens was was was, was up there, wasn't it? You know, it was a terrible experience, you know, all around, you know. Mm. Uh, but, you know, you, you don't you don't tend to go on about the, the bad experiences, do you? Mm. You, 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 you want to look... At, you know, at the at the good times, really. You know, and I think well, when we got back into Europe, and then we had started that. I remember going to Genoa when we played. Yeah. Uh, ninety two was it? Ninety one, ninety two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then we uh, we also then we played Paris Saint Germain again, didn't we? We got beat two 0 did Leonardo yeah, scored yeah. two? Yeah, went there. Well, and then we were in Austria in Tyrol. Hmm. I remember going to Tyrol and having to fly into Genoa again and get a. Mm. get a, a, a coach up the mountain and it was freezing but it was mm. just full of the lads you don't realise how lucky you are do you to support a club that's give you so many adventures no. like this I mean imagine if you supported I don't know Lincoln Evan, Lincoln Evan. Sam, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> when we got back I, I went to every game, game home and away when we first got back we got Bromby as well I remember going Bromby, up to yeah. Copenhagen as well yeah 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 that, that was a trip expensive yeah. yeah but yeah a good trip do you think that over the years you've, you've took it for granted Certainly in the eighties we were taking it for granted, yeah. I mean, and then we never thought we'd ever be back. So Benita, well, there was Julier. a Hulier was the one who restored the pride really in terms of <clears throat> Europe. Um, he restored the pride, but then uh, it was you know the UEFA Cup, wasn't it? Mm. But what we, the Champions League was always a, you know a yeah. distant memory really, European Cup. But then when Benitez restored that and two finals in three years. Mm. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Mm. Uh, and then we had the Hicks and Gillette scenario. We, they come in just as he got to his second European Cup final, 2007. And we thought, it's, that's the distant past now. Mm. Now, Klopp has restored us as like at the top table of European football, hasn't he? Mm. And he, you know, he could never have seen this under Brendan Rodgers, could you? No. Because even though we nearly won the league and maybe should have won the league under Brendan Rodgers, he capitulated in Europe, you know, he, he literally... He, Started he, against Real Madrid, or Steven Gerrard. When it was like, yeah, when he didn't play, and you think, what are you doing? Yeah. This is a, you know, Liverpool, you know, bread and butter was the 
uh, League Division 1 won it, but then it was Europe. That's what Shankly wanted, a bastion of invincibility. I think hopefully Klopp's getting us back to that, you know. I, I don't take it for granted because back in the 80s, we used to, we, when we were kids, we used to just think, this is brilliant, this every season, every season, winning something, and then the 90s come and there was nothing. And getting back to that 2001 season with Uli, where was it was a bar that we beat in the semi? 1-0. One 1-0, nil. Mm. One nil. Rainer in goal. Uh, penalty, did we win? Rainer in goal. Yeah, Gary Mack penalty, mm-hmm. I think. And um, I was with our Kevin, who must have been 10 or something, in the upper Annie Rose, and I was crying. We'd reached the final in Dortmund, I was crying. He said, Dad, why are you crying? I'm saying, I can feel it, we're back. Mm. It wasn't straight back, we, you know. But, mm. well, so that, that's why I don't go anymore, because of the old circus surrounding the club. But when we get into big finals like this, um, I've got to go because I don't take it for granted. And by the way, I'm not taking the tiffer off anyone either because they haven't got one. But I've got to go. The old occasion, getting there, going to Benidorm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going um, to Benidorm? So, you know, Are you going to Benidorm? Uh, Alicante was there. <laughs> but uh, still, European Cup final sitting on the beach. That's you know, that's what mm. dreams are made of, isn't mm. it? Yeah. I remember in, in Dortmund we'd all saying. Uh, Oh, you know, the expense getting to the because we went on like an organised trip, you know, that we still go on now, but we thought in a few years' time we'll, we'll get everyone together and we'll we'll get, you know, we'll get the bond to get a plane to do trips, you know. And the spirit of Shankly have been able to do that for coaches, but we've never been able to afford the bond. You need a massive bond, don't you, to get a, a flight, something like 70, 80 grand or something. 130 grand it is. Oh, 130 yeah. now, is it? And what's that for, sorry? To, 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 be, to, be, to be able to hire a player. So you've got to guarantee slots. And yeah, yeah. And this, that, but, you know, that was, what, 18 years ago? And we're still in the same position in terms of travel, aren't we? Mm. You know, And we've got Istanbul next year as well, by the way. I think. Oh, is that the European final next yeah, year, is European it? European final. We'll I, think, I know the... Uh, Matri on the run. I know the... Um, the Super Cup's in Istanbul, isn't it? This year, isn't it? Yeah, it is, um, is the Super Cup in Istanbul, Istanbul and the World Club Championships in Morocco? I'd like to go uh, to that. Uh, uh, right. Marrakesh. Oh, we, so we played in City in the Charity Shield now. Yeah. We will be, yeah. We, yeah, we, play we will City. be, yeah. yeah. yeah we play City. Don't, yeah. Yeah. don't even think I'll bother. Only, only, only do European tip no, no go down and just have a look at their plastic flags that's all I'm going for go down some plastic flags <laughs> yeah and I'm actually going into ba- I'm flying into Barcelona on the Thursday got a high night in Barcelona yeah. and got a high car down to Madrid a couple of nights in Madrid drive back to Barca uh, get home on Tuesday tra- I would have got the train if I was advising you I thought I'd got a high car nice a little high car, yeah, BMW yeah. 3 Series a bit of a journey you know 6 hours yeah yeah of a journey. I think mm. the train takes three, don't it? It's like a bullet train, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the trains, yeah. as the trains go around the bend, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I swear you are all on to the train, they're just rapid. <sighs> the only thing I'm a bit gutted, and I suppose it's been like that for every final, is if, if and when we win it, you miss the homecoming, don't you? Like most of these probably did well, for well, Istanbul. For, for mm. Kiev, the homecoming was going to be the Monday, so when we've booked this one, we've booked an easy early flight out on the Monday. Anyway, the homecoming's on the on Sunday, Sunday, so. I'll watch that on the beach. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> if it's if it's yeah, us. It's all, uh, I think most people missed it from Istanbul, didn't they? I never. We uh when, if you're in Istanbul where you're talking about that big marquee, as you got yeah, there, the everything was cancelled, weren't it? Yeah. Everything yeah. was cancelled yeah. except our flight. And our flight mm. went out. YouTube. But yeah. other lads had to get on other flights which they had, weren't even supposed to be on. And we got home to Manchester, got um taxi and just got to the bottom of London Road just as they were coming along with the mm. cup yeah look at this I remember sitting on top of a line outside St George's um, <clears throat> St George's Hall mm. the scenes were just quite incredible I remember it's amazing how they all got from, um, from Mel- Norway so quickly isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's great for the city, isn't it? I remember being at the bottom of London Road. And Where was the, that? Where's that now? That's, that's the side of St George's St. Road, Road, up by yeah, the yeah. Pay yeah. And um, I was at the bottom of London Road and the amount of people arriving in the city yeah. from outside. And I mean, unbelievable. I've never read, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's Imagine. brilliant for the city. And I'm not trying to like rub Everton fans' noses in it, but no. it's, it, it is. It's, it's well, I, like, Even last Saturday, when there was no chance of us winning the league last Sunday, and I went to town early to, to open the shop up, and the people just running about. There was yeah. a buzz. Well, I did a, I did an interview with the Daily Telegraph, which mm. you know I didn't know it was for the Daily Telegraph. Actually, it was 
like all Andy Mitten does United We Stand it's his mate Jim White he's a, and he writes for the Telegraph but he writes also for loads of different magazines mm-hmm. but anyway I did this interview and what Jockey was saying there great for the city I just said basically you know the city's buzzing this that and the other I never mentioned Everton in the article I deliberately never mentioned Everton you know we just ignore them completely but they put the headline online Peter Hooten all together now the city is all behind Liverpool and like, this flack I got off Evertonians <laughs> really? on social media who hadn't read the interview yeah. they just read the headline but they were just trying to shoehorn the headline in mm-hmm. and I was saying it was great for the city because of hotels because you know people come for the Beatles and they come for football mm. and it's great because you know everyone benefits from that taxi drivers but I never mentioned Everton and I never said Everton fans were behind us I got absolute hell for about 12 hours you know and he doesn't know what he's talking about he's full of shit you know maybe in Oslo maybe in Thailand you know all this. Yeah, yeah. so I never really answered it because you thought it's best to ignore it all you know but then um, I put it on the Facebook my Facebook and I just thought I'd get the same oh you know you know a uh, bit of abuse but about six or seven Evertonians come on there and went I do want Liverpool to win something mm. I, you know and like and I'm not saying they're like just six or seven yeah <laughs> out of about 30 <laughs> comments but a couple of them <laughs> are proper Evertonians from years ago mm. and saying you know and they're like you know uh, one of them Joe Farag he's a big community activist in Toxins you know and he, he's, he's always been a proper uh, proper blue nose you know and he was saying you know I've grown up, you know, I don't mind Liverpool winning things, you know, but I want us to beat you every time mm. and I want Everton to win more than you, but it's not going to affect my life, mm. you know, if Liverpool wins something, I'll just ignore it. Well, I, I remember that season, I, th- I think it was the 14 season when uh, Gerard had that slip, I'm sure Everton were doing quite well that season and it was great, every weekend Liverpool were winning, Everton were, Everton were winning and it was great. Because everyone's happy, aren't they? Well, that's what it was like in the 80s, one of that. And the, that Two Tribes documentary, you still haven't seen that. But, Me neither. Uh, but, no, um, neither. but the two t- goes on about li- Liverpool, Merseyside against Thatcher, basically. That's mm. what the you know, pretext for it, wasn't it? You know, Everton were winning, Liverpool were winning, and the whole city seemed to be against the Thatcher government, which was, there's an element of unity there, you know, but it's, it's, gone, it's gone beyond that, you know. And From, I think, um, sorry. Was, from a business point of view, I'd love Everton. I'd love it to be 1985. Yeah. Everton in the final for the shop. Yeah, we'd be brilliant. Yeah. You know I mean, I'm not fussy. Some of my best mates them. are Evertonians, and you know they 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 sort of like that. They fill us up. The football fans though, yeah. and he say if Liverpool play better than Tottenham, fair, you know, fair like Gary. people like Gary yeah, Hart, and yeah. you know, he's great. Ever, but the football fans as mm-hmm. well, you know, so. I think we can generalise about all Evertonians. Yeah. And it's not the reality, is it? It's not the reality. It's it's the more vociferous, you know, a group of people in that, you know. The ones who shot the loudest. Yeah, on they're the ones who shot the loudest on social media, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and doing an interview with the Telegraph, he's supposed to be, a, you know, one of the, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, everyone has their own opinion. But put it this way, I always want it, Liverpool to hammer Everton. But if Everton were in the Europa League, I wouldn't mind it. You know, I wouldn't mind them winning it. Do you know what I mean? As long as we won the... Uh, <laughs> the big well, they're not going to get in the Champions League, are they? You know, any time soon. I'm just talking about realistic things, you know, mm. League, League Cup, Europa League. Yeah, it wouldn't bother me if they won it. It no. wouldn't bother me. You know, as long as we won the Premier League yeah, and yeah. the uh, Champions League. Yeah. <laughs> what are your um, experiences of Istanbul? I would have been 13 to 12, uh, how would I, yeah, 12, 13. And I remember being, I remember someone, my uh, stepdad used to teach it, uh, David Lloyd and Kirby. I remember someone had put a bet on to Liverpool to win. And I'm sure it was at the time, it must have been like 10 grand or something like that for them to win. At half time? No, no. Uh, no, before the game. Oh, right. Before the game. I don't know what the odds would have been. And, uh, I remember I was actually playing outside, kicking a ball around. I remember my stepdad kept coming in, going, "Fucking hell, it's it's three one," and then three, and then blah blah blah, and then obviously I came in to watch the uh, the, the, the the final minutes as such. Mm-hmm. But but I, I, to be honest, I, I it was real. Ever since that time, I sort of followed Liverpool. Ever since that game, because I my granddad used to go, used to have a season ticket. Ever since that game. I started to take a little bit more interest than I than I used to do as such, 
And that's why I think I came back to that question before, is that do football clubs wish for these sort of big comebacks to then grab people like me who aren't um, who aren't, haven't grown up behind Liverpool and the whole family support the the team because it grabs people like me and other people who are sort of on the borderline but between sort of gaining more interest in the c- the cynic in me says they're looking for them sort of sound bites to go around the world to sell merchandise yeah yeah look at look at FSG FSG bought us what two hundred eighty mil. Yeah, if we, win, if, we win this, if we win this final, we're probably worth 1.2 bill. Yeah, what a touch! What a touch, Dave had. Um, and I say the merchandise. I used to go to China a lot, which is funny. So they be that's the kind of market they should be aiming at India and China. I used to go to China a lot, and there'd be an Irish bar it's called the Paddy Fields, and um, I go in there and watch Liverpool on Saturday, and all Chinese being there with the pill shirt, mm. and the next day you go in Man United be on, and the same f- Chinese people. Was having Man United shirts on, so you know what I mean. That's just not the club loyalty. It's more no, it's just like, yeah. so that, just, that's just the market. Pure business. Yeah, that, yeah. When when you say uh, what are they aiming at? Not aiming at kids and not a screen. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Curtail, they're aiming at the international market. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's a bad thing, really, for 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 us who've grown up with it, isn't it? Well, it's all that's why not, mm. I'm not going to have a ticket for Real Madrid, am I? For the first. Madrid for the final well yeah. how, many, how many tickets actually going to, I mean the breakdown was done wasn't it, it I think 10,000 is it 10 8 or 10,000 are going to mm. like people who, who actually go the to matches game, isn't yeah. it the and rest is just the, the rest of our allocation is going to hospitality corporates and that and that's what Liverpool have done and that's you know they'd argue that building the main stand 50% of the main stand is corporate isn't it Mm. And they'll generate money, and that's why they can keep at the top and that. But yeah, if, uh, you know, if there's an argument there, you've got to keep your your, your local heart, heart and soul. But and going, on, to. going on on the new stands, you know, I've been in it a few times. Or where the use have, but there's a little group that starts singing in there now. It's it's not just mm. the corporate side, and and them extra <laughs> few voices, you know, they can be heard now. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? And no. it's just so. I don't know what the noise levels have gone f- oh. from to, but you know it's not just a corporate things where they're not getting involved. They get involved. Everyone mm. gets involved. Mm. I mean, it's just obvious that we, just, you know, Anfield's not big enough, is it? Should be at least seventy thousand. Should mm. be. You'll yeah. you'll see you'll see at this final you'll see a group of like a family of five or, or five fellas, and you think they have been a match in life, but they look they have five tickets because they'll got it through Jeremy who works in the city yeah. or something, but then. We know groups of lads who go to who haven't missed a game since, since as far back. You remember, five of them won't be able to sit in the game mm. together. It's it's it's, That's it's, why it's it's corrupt, isn't it? That's why the spirit of Shang being putting uh, pressure on the sponsors, really. Mm. You know, because the sponsors want part of the they want part of it. They're sponsoring the Champions League, uh, various Mastercard, you know, whatever. Uh, they're so they they're sponsoring it because they want to be part of the spectacle. Mm. And they, you know, but it's the fans who make that. Oh, it's so, the yeah. fans who the Barcelona comeback. You know, how many of them in the cop twelve thousand will be getting tickets? Probably, oh. probably ten, twenty percent at the very most. You know? And the, the kind of sponsors that want to be there and you know say we were there and experience that atmosphere. The atmosphere is getting less and less in a sense because yeah, all yeah. those real people all are there. That East, Istanbul, um, mm. That Istanbul moment, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many? How many do you reckon scousers will be out there? Forty, fifty. Mm. Yeah, forty, fifty, easy. Yeah. Ah, Kevin, he's coming from Australia without a ticket. He knows he's not getting in. He just wants to be there. He just wants to be there for the old spectacle. What do you reckon the Madrid- Tottenham fans are like in that sense? Tottenham, they'll, they'll. That's the thing. Tottenham will travel if we maybe Ajax would have travelled, but if we would have got the likes of say, you know, Porto or. Someone, all their neutral tickets would have been snapped up by the Pill fans, as they always are. Athens, Istanbul, Kiev last year, all the neutrals were snapped up by the Pill fans. But now you're competing with Spurs fans for them neutral tickets, mm. so they're just not, they're just not coming. Mm. They, they're just, they're just not going to be. T- no one's get anyone travelling there on the hope of getting a ticket. I'll be very, very disappointed. Love your optimism, jockey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've not got a ticket, no. I've fucking tried everything to try and get one. And you put a tweet out, I, 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 put a t- I put a tweet out saying, um, 
you're kind of half jokey, half being a bit cheeky. You to mean the dead serious? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Come on. <laughs> the, I, can I pop? Can I just while I'm near? Did you see Sam Quek's tweet yesterday? Yeah. No, no Sam Quek. Yeah. yeah. Sam Quek tweeted something like, um, "That fellow who keeps asking me to fart into <laughs> a walkie-talkie for him, the weird bastard." Um, now's your moment to shine if you can get me two champions. Like this. <laughs> no, I, I remember um, I remember without like fucking shaming them in a little bit, but I got asked to do the motivational talk with the England team before the World Cup. And um the lad who saw it, it was like, listen, you know, it's not gonna be a paid gig. Um which which pisses me off anyway, that even though it's a it was a bit of an honour. Yeah, yeah. It's still like fucking Still pay, going you know? to work, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, Still doing a thing, yeah. so we didn't get paid for it. And they were like, Oh, they'll sort us, you know, a little they'll sort us something good, you know, what we're doing. Pro uh, sandwiches. Um, <laughs> so they said, uh, And then they said, oh, And you get all the pictures as well, they'll take loads of good photos, it'd be great for your social media. So, uh, do this talk. Fucking got given this little bag, it had like a USB stick on with an England fucking thing on a thing for your car in England flag. And, um, like a fucking bar of chocolate or something <laughs> and then they said oh you're not allowed to use any of the photos that we've took yeah yeah i was like so i've just fucking done a little motivational talk for you just for, free. for free can't use any of the photos and i got a fucking stupid little bag so i was like yeah. so then i done a tweet the other day saying look if anyone has a thank you wants to get a wants to give me an england it wants to get me a ticket anyone at england and the ironic thing is it got seen like hundred and twenty thousand times yeah. but yet no one not fucking one, no. That's the FA for you. Yeah, <laughs> I, got, um, I got a phone call off UEFA. I got a phone call off UEFA Saturday morning. We'd done a T-shirt with um, our logo and the lads looking down and his shadow is turned into the European Cup. So I got a phone call. I wasn't in the shop, so the sh- UEFA phoned the shop and gave me the number. So I phoned UEFA and they, they answered. They said, uh, I believe you want a word at me. They went, yeah, it's UEFA. We own the rights for uh, the European Cup. And they said, you've, you're doing a T-shirt there with... Um, with a shadow of the European Cup, and mm. we need you to take it down. So I said, uh, "Okay, I don't want to upset anyone." I, I, I didn't realise I was in, you know, I didn't realise I was doing anything wrong. They was dead nice about it and all that. We got talking about this, that, and the other, and we even went on to Danny Baker and everything. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I thought, well, so I agreed to take the T-shirt down and not sell it, but I thought. I'll turn it um, a negative into a positive, so I said to him, I just burst out laughing. So, um, as I say, it's 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 nigh on impossible. To get I've never to known it as bad as this for no. tickets, like, yeah. well, you know. Be, well, I was in the gym with like the lads who, who they're everywhere, even they're struggling. Mm. Like, the lads in the gym who you probably know as well, and you're thinking, fucking have they not even got tickets? Mm. Fucking no chance. Mm. Mono, it's gone to the it's gone to the youth for family, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mono qual- qualified. No. I mean, I, 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 when I go to the European away, you see, I don't get the credit on my card. You see, uh, I just get them off mates or yeah. whatever, you know. So I was in the ballot, and I'm t- <coughs> six thousand on the waiting list. What's the frustrating thing? I mean, Phil, Phil Reid, I go where he had. I think he needed seven or something on each, and he had like six on two different cards, yeah. or he, or he was split on up against them. Well, six is the home games, isn't it? Mm. But you've got to get that credit. But he had the away games on as well. You've got to get onto the system. Yeah. By and it, it's, I was years ago, but I, I just, you know, just yeah. lazy and just never got round to doing it for. Any and of it's like like the thing with jockey. I I managed to bunk into PSG, but then got a ticket off jockey for Barca. So mm. you're like, even though you've been to those games. There's no proof. There's no proof. Of it. No, no. What am I meant to do? Ring up UEFA and say I got in on a black ticket for PSG. Yeah, I have been yeah. to them. What's on my head in as well when you travel over? You, you, you spend all this money to get to Barcelona. It's not cheap getting there if you don't book it early. And then you've got to go and pick your tickets up. And then you've got to name the people who's on the tickets with you. And things happen. People can't make yeah. it. Mm. So say like Billy Jones, who was originally going to be on my ticket. If he hasn't arrived to pick that ticket up with me, that ticket goes. Well, you, you, does it go in the bin or does it go to someone in you know in corporate? Mm. But if Billy Jones hadn't been with me to pick that ticket up, that ticket was not getting given to me, and they wouldn't give me my money back for it either. It's it's, yeah. it's uh, they they try and do things because like they know football. It. It's a drug, isn't it? You know, <coughs> people are always going right, to want to go it? and love it. So mm. yeah, it is it is tricky now. There's, there's, you can pick your ticket up over there or you can get it posted out to you. Well, so if anything happens, no, we didn't have the choice. I had to pick it up over there. But things happen, don't they? Yeah, exactly. But that's what I'm saying. Anything can happen within these two weeks. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's people then could then pass it on maybe to one of the families. So what's the procedure to do that? I was went on the... Because my son's gone, I went on the 
Govtop UK site last night and had a little look and there's no you can't drink in the ground there's no big screens around Madrid that day they're basically telling you to go to the bars everything's fine and you've it, you know you've got to get to the ground two hours before and mm-hmm. there's got to be I think three or four checks but you said it Liverpool have got the Salvador Dali square there that's where they're from but, but, but you didn't pick the tickets up near the ground on it's square you had to go elsewhere it's like going on a jet it's like going on a visit to see someone in jail you had to go in you had to behave yourself you had all the security looking at you and they say, right, you can go over there. Well, and you then you got your, questioned. Did you make your squat when you get your ticket? <laughs> yeah, I God, the things you had to go oh, through to no. pick a ticket up, to go and watch yeah. a game of football. It's ridiculous, yeah. That, it's not just that, it's the money you spend on watching Liverpool all over the years. It's an insult. Yeah, but this you, is what you, we do. You can bet you, you for delegates won't have to go through that. You know, I'll be there for his match probably it made me laugh yeah. when uh, Liverpool come out with a statement saying we advise all fans who haven't got a ticket not to go to Madrid oh, and, uh, and then that. and then well, uh, put that back to 70 81 no and then, and then that same day Mo Salah put his Instagram up saying uh, let's bring Anfield to Madrid or something <laughs> like that. I think I put, I put on it uh, and there'll be Liverpool there'll be 80,000 Liverpool fans but this how it works right this how it works the, the, it, you get through you beat Barcelona 4-0 right and you get through and if you don't go on the ale, you go on Sky Scanner and you book, you don't know whether you're getting a ticket, but you're getting ripped off by these big um, airlines. So it'll go, it'll have gone up from 300 quid to 800 quid overnight, right? So you've got to book it. And then uh, two weeks later, when the tickets come out, they're telling you not to travel. Hmm. You know what I mean? If you haven't got a ticket, so what happens to your 800 quid? Yeah. You know what I mean? Point, it, does, yeah. It, it doesn't, it, there's no doesn't sense. common sense. There's no, no rash- common sense in it. There's no rationality. Before to it, we played in, um, bef- we could have got to the final in uh, Russia against Man United. Chelsea got there in the end. We could have mm. played Man United mm-hmm. in the final, couldn't we? And uh, and because it was a three week wait waiting list for visas, um, the club actually you actually applied for your ticket three weeks before the game. So I'll, you know you with me. So why mm. can't they put that in place? That we know we were playing in the semi anyway. So why can't the club already? Put in place, right? If we we're only in the semis now, but if you get there, you're getting a sick guarantee. Yeah, yeah. But they won't because they're going to hand them out to all the uh, mm, Tom Dick and Harry. Hmm. Yeah. It's corrupt. Right. <laughs> hey, we had a good beer in Bass, didn't we? It's brilliant. Really? Match got in the way. I love Bass. I've got to got to the match and we got B3 and I thought, fucking hell, it did get in the way. Yeah. Bass is a great place. Bass was great. I fucking love Bass. Um, so, yeah, so to round off then, you're, you're not going to do a prediction now? No, I told you nerves and anxiety, and that's what's got me through for you know 49 years of age, 50 soon. It's got mm. me through not mm. doing predictions, and I believe in it. You know, like my dad said to me, you know, Paul, don't gamble, don't go and put money in the bookies. The best mm. way to double your money is fold it half and put it back in your pocket. So I'm sticking to them two things. <laughs> my prediction is uh, the Reds are coming up the old boys. <laughs> mm. My prediction is Cathy Benadon will be brilliant. <laughs> the talk of the town will be out of this world and Liverpool will win 3 1 if we if I eventually get up to Madrid. Yeah, I reckon um I d- and I also think we could go down. We could uh, I find at Liverpool when we play we we're better when we when we go a goal down, how many times this season? Mm, mm. Uh, that's when that's when we go for it. Like I mean, we mm. went a goal down against Barcelona, but we were three from the previous leg, mm. and three one for the bill. I can't even I can't even begin to think of getting beat. No, same. I I, I think three 0 and I think as well. You look at that team now, the players there, Van Dijk, Allison especially. They don't seem like the, the type of well, it's obvious to say this, but. The difference in Alisson and Carriers, you know, that occasion just got to Carriers. You look at Alisson, he is not, you could, can't even imagine him letting it kind of be, be overrun much, by, the, yeah, yeah, by the. Look at Salah, Salah was cheated of a European Cup final last year. Mm. Not, not of a European Cup, actual participation in mm. a European Cup final. He's going to be hungry, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, it's exciting. I, yeah, I think. I can't see anything past us a sixth European Cup. It sounds mad to say that six European Cup. I can't believe in my lifetime this will be the what, the fourth European Cup. Uh, I think I've seen five. I'm of thinking fourth see, European I, final. I'm looking at it through my son's eyes now. Paul, who goes home and away all the all the European matches mm. and jumps onto coaches to go to Bournemouth and Southampton and yeah, to yeah, Newcastle. Yeah. yeah, and it is time now. Mm. And I That's just it. feel for him and all these young supporters who are out mm. there. 
it's I just want them to have a little yeah. bit of what we've had no. growing up, do you know, just a little bit, do you know? And saying that, ah, Kevin's twenty nine. He's been to three European club. Well, this will be his third European club final. It would have been mm-hmm. four. Only he lives. He's been in Australia ten years, so he's similar age to you. Um, so they're not. They haven't. They haven't had it that bad, have they? <laughs> That's, yeah. that's what, that's just what that we're not winning them. But that's that's that just shows you though how great and we were Basel, though the fact Basel. that we've yeah. we've all still got lads like yeah. me thirty odd have still got some great memories. But even yeah. still, he's still pale in significance compared to the seventies and eighties. Yeah, we never even mentioned Ozer or Ogzer, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the Walters come back. Mm. <laughs> when Mick Marsh shining. When Platini came <laughs> in to see yeah. us and said, "I've got a young lad here who supports Liverpool, wants to play for Liverpool." Do you know who it was? Go Eric Cantona. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's in, know, it's in quite a few there. books, but mm. Patini came in, knocked on his door, said, Look, I've got this young lad. Uh, he wants to play for Liverpool. He's a Liverpool fan. And uh, as soon as took a look at him, looked at his you know, record, disciplinary record. And for soon as you think that would be attracted to him, wouldn't yeah. he? Yeah. Because of his disciplinary mm. record, he went, Too much trouble. Really? So then he went to Sheffield Wednesday on trial. Uh, they saw him for a week. Said you're on Ashton Turf because it was snowing, so we want to see you on grass. Leeds had it. Leeds scouts had spotted him. Obviously, mm-hmm. at, at the binoculars through the uh, <laughs> through the training ground. And, and uh, again, and they bought him. You know, they just bought him mm-hmm. like that. You know, or just a matter. You know, it's it's fate, isn't it? Yeah. Little same decisions like Ronaldo that. Yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fate, yeah. little decisions like that. But it, it, say for example, Rogers had won the league in 2000. 13, 14, we wouldn't have Klopp now, would we? Mm. And we wouldn't have this, what he's building, which is a dynasty, yeah. which he is the I best don't thing. think mm-hmm. Brendan Rodgers would have done. You know? No, and there was always that feeling with Brendan Rodgers, wasn't it? I remember every, I, I went every week that, that that season, and you did. I was going to the ground thinking, fucking hell, is this going to be the game where we fuck it up? But I was feeling like that for weeks, because it was just momentum, and we just kept on winning, and you thought, fucking hell, this is a bit lucky, like we yeah, might yeah. actually do... Whereas this, all season I've turned up thinking, we're going to win here. Yeah, yeah. We're going to fucking batter these. Yeah. And that's the difference in it, what he's done. He's, he's the best thing that's happened in my lifetime looking at the pool. Yeah. But technically speaking, just imagine we never won against Spurs. There's still going to be people out there saying, he got it wrong. He mm. got it wrong. So you're being Why are you back always back? thinking the negative? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I was just <laughs> thinking there. Liverpool gives us everything. Yeah. Every, yeah. All the emotions, all the feelings, the heartache, the joy, them experiences that we're going to like speak about forever. I mean, we're all talking about them now. And that, mm. for me, in life, and to just pass on, mm. you know, and now we can see all clips on them on the telly. Mm. It's just, it's amazing. And it's he, great to be a Liverpool fan yeah, right now. It is, yeah. And he and Klopp gets... I, I woke up for 4 4 two, a couple of few weeks ago, but he's the nearest thing to, like, shank I've just done that boot, mm. boot room boys book. To me, it's the nearest thing to because he not only he not only gets what the club's about, he knows what the fans are about. When remember when he first come and people were singing that stupid song, to, yeah, yeah, again, club, da, 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 da. remember that? And he went mad, didn't he? Don't be singing my name. It's about the team, mm. not my name. You know, not understanding that Liverpool fans have always idolised the yeah. the, uh, the managers who've done, you know, had some connection with the fans. But in a way, he was right, if you think about it. He said, we've won nothing yet. Sing my name if we win something. Mm. That's a Shankly or something. What? Shankly went six. Oh, I like that number six. I did social media. I like that number six, and you said it's... Oh, I like it. Yeah, six. I like it. Six grand for the ticket. <laughs> That's a, six grand for a flight. So we, we, were, we, we were speaking this week because, like, the tickets have gone through the roof. And so we so we're having a little bit of a dilemma. If you got offered five grand for your ticket, would you rather have the experience, or would you rather have the five grand? I haven't got a ticket. No, but hypothetically, I don't. I would give it to our Kevin. I wouldn't let our Kevin okay. see other people fine. I've no no money in the world. No, I would never sell a ticket for you know. Same, you know, same, ever. yeah. You know, I get. I think, and I think it's 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 it'd be sad. I was you know there was talk about if we were going to win the league at Wolves. You know, and you, it'd make me so sad to think that a young lad, I maybe, I don't know, a young family, something's tempted to maybe spell it for five grand. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It'd fucking kill me that to see yeah. someone part with the ticket because they're getting, they're getting given the money there and then. Yeah. Well, so I asked yeah. our poor, my son, just 
just to see what his answer would be. And he just looked and started laughing and said, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. good, good answer. And I was like, yeah, that's it. You know, it's just, it's great right now to, to be a little I'd rather, to go to that match. you know, have no money in the bank, but a bank of memories of, of what you've been through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck the money. Like, you, yeah. you want to be having those days out, those weeks of, like, a few days away with your mates, mm-hmm. experiencing that. Because, like you say, there's no other football club who, who are doing it on a regular basis for, for generations. Well, even in town, mm-hmm. all the places are sold out. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's an event. It's become, mm-hmm. like, a huge, huge event. I was looking at the... Uh, listening to someone the other day said that, actually, the figures that watch the game live is 2.6 million. Do you know what I mean? Because it's now on. But that's the figures they've got. That's the official figures. How many people have watched it on streams? How many black people boxes. have watched it on illegal boxes? Seems very low, yeah. Yeah. I know it is, but that's what that's, that's the viewing figures from BT. I thought, oh, I thought it was last year. Uh, Kev last year was 20 million. No, but this is, I'm talking about. This is I heard this on Talksport the other day. You were talking the figures was 2.6 million. I don't believe anything you hear on Talksport. Well, that's down to them. But even so, how many how many people are going to be watching that match? Mm. Yeah, do you know I'll what I mean? Mad. In Liverpool, in the city. Yeah, you know, for both reasons. In a tapas bar in Madrid. <laughs> Same way. <laughs> yeah. So on that note, if anyone does have any tickets, fucking get in touch with me. Yeah, touch with me. <laughs> <laughs> anything else you want to finish on, lads? Or. <clears throat> No, that's uh, just a great time to be alive. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wish great time to be a Liverpool man. fan. And yeah. just one thing, I, I did an interview with uh, Andy Mitten, who does United We Stand, but he also does um, writes for Four Four Two. But he's based in Barcelona. And just before the match, just before the Everton match, he came to interview me you know, before he was going to the Everton match, and they got beat four 0 didn't they? At Everton, didn't they? United. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But you could see he's. You can see it, you can feel it when he's talking to you. I was saying, do you want some counsel, Andy? <laughs> because he knows what's happening. You know that you know the cyclical thing of Liverpool being on the up and then being on, it's, it's happening. And even though they might have more money than Liverpool, he knows it's not an easy fix. And I think he knows that you know. I mean, I, and realistically, he's been always the type of person who says he wants a strong Liverpool because there's nothing like beating a strong Liverpool. You know, and in a way, you want a strong United, don't you, for that rivalry? Mm. Because City are the imposters, aren't they? Yeah, f- they are that's the not imposters. a fucking rivalry. I'm going to tweet. I'm going to tweet that one from last year. Do you remember that uh, when we were getting to? And if them scouts bastards win that show, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like Rio Ferdinand's going to never live that quote down, is he? Like oh, Ollie at the wheel. Yeah, yeah. That one. Give him it now. Give him the money now. Yeah. Get, get a pen and paper. <laughs> Write whatever number you want down. Just fucking get on We're it. We're back. Yeah. Now what a time. Yeah. Up the reds. Cheers, chaps. Okay. <laughs>